I am Catalina George and I am reporting on local businesses in Hampshire and Dorset. Today I'm going to interview Mr. Patterson on his butcher shop, the oldest run family business in Ringwood. Now your butcher shop is um, the oldest family business currently running mm -hmm. in Ringwood? 116 years. What do you think makes your business so long lasting? But as you see, you see from the displays we put on, I take a great pride in it. Oh, we've had so many customers over the years and customers coming in that have been coming in for the last 60 years, 70 years, some of them, you know. It's, it's really down to quality and expertise and all our butchers, I say four, four of our butchers here, uh, four of my butchers have been with me over 30 years, which speaks for itself, you know. Here's Alan Steiner, one of the butchers at work. But what do the customers have to say about Patterson's Butchers? Why do you shop in here? I shop yeah. in here because it's a lovely, friendly butchers. And the meat's always very good. And I certainly have got no complaints. They're very friendly. How often do you, do you shop? How long have I been coming in here yeah. now? Yeah. My God. It's a long time. It's a long time. It's got to be over 10 years, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I like, well, their sausages are good, for one. Um, I, I prefer to buy my meat from the butchers than I do from the supermarket, really. This is a good butcher shop. Okay, so uh, why don't we talk about you first? How did you start as a butcher? I was born into it. We have uh, six generations now of butchers. And my grandfather started this business in 1900. Um, he and his brother left home and came to Bournemouth originally because their mother died and they couldn't get on with their stepmother and they were butchers at Axminster in Devon. And they opened the shop up in Ringwood in Meeting House Lane, which, do you know where Meeting House Lane is? This is up the road that comes down from the car park. They, they were in there first and there was two brothers, um, George and, and uh, William. William was my grandfather, George was his brother, and when they got married, they split up, and there was two Patterson's butchers in Ringwood. Uh, there was one opposite, where the, um, which is now Cow Toy, which is the estate agent, that was my uncle George's butcher shop, and William had this one here. Um, so that was the start of it. Then my grandfather bought a farm in the centre of Ringwood, which was compulsory purchase for the schools and playing fields a long time ago in there. But, um, and then, as I said, I was, so I was born into, I was, got photographs of me when I'm about nine with apron and working here in the shop. So we've always worked. And I left school at 15, I went to Swanage, did apprenticeship with a butcher down there. And I came from there and I went to Burley and worked at the village butchers. Then I went on to Queen Elizabeth to do catering butchering, which was very nice. And then I got married, and I'm married, and then I uh, managed to shop in Bournemouth. And when my father was taken poorly, I moved back here and took over the business here from him. So, and my two sons and my daughter are here now working in the business. So it's been a long time, but it's it's been an enjoyable thing. It's, like all things in life, if, if you enjoy your job, it makes it easy and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, in, uh, I think it was, I'm trying to think what year it was, 1992, which was when I was made a freeman in the city of London and became a liveryman of the Worship Company of Butchers, which was a great honor for me. Um, and it's, it's one of the oldest livery companies in London. I think it's the seventh oldest, originating from 1164, it goes back to. So that's only a thousand years. It's a long, long time. Eh? Can I ask also um, about when you were a butcher on um, the sheep? Yes. The transatlantic sheep? Yes. How was that time for you? Well, how was it? I was saving money to get married. Um, and it was a... It was an interesting, very interesting, because I have a lot of film stars that on board. Worked long hours, long hours. And I was lucky enough to 
be given the kennels because we used to look after the kennels and all the animals that were shipped across the Atlantic was under my jurisdiction. I had a, had a, a kennels on board and an exercise yard and that was part of my job to uh, look after the animals. And of course the people weren't allowed to have them in the cabins but of course if they were small enough and I was crafty enough, I could used to smuggle the, the, the dogs down and that to them in their cabins at night and pick them up in the morning. <laughs> and I used to get some very good tips, very, you know, really, there were some very wealthy people on board there. You know, I'm talking about, um, I mean, it was only a four day trip across from New York to Cherbourg. And in those days, one, I remember several times, one lady in particular, she used to give me $200 tip you know, when you think, consider, we were working for about 18 pounds a week on board, plus overtime, I know. But $200 a tip was, a, yeah. Where do you get the meat from then? Most of us, well, it comes from several sources, but most of it comes from Bridport. To say it's out of Bridport, home farm in Bridport, which is an abattoir, and, um, and farmers, they've got three farms. You have told me that with one of the farms, is yeah. it the one in Bridport? You had yeah. a really, you've had a really long relationship. Seventy with years relation, at least seventy years with them. Yeah, as I say, the um, the owners, John Norman's wife Greer, was one of my first girlfriends when I was about thirteen. You know. What do you think is the most important thing today for a butcher to be competitive in the market in the UK? Is 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 the only one thing is quality. The only thing that is expertise and quality and service. And that's something the supermarkets can't compete with. They cannot compete on quality and service. I, I can tell you where all my meat comes from. They can't. And, the, and also one of the biggest cons at the moment, the supermarkets are full of it, is when they, they advertise for their, their stuff which is so sourced locally and it's a con because they source it from a local wholesaler it's it's it, they, they, a lot of them are doing it now saying their meat sourced locally and you think oh well it's it's bought it's local farms but it's not it's sourced locally from a wholesaler which might be in Bournemouth or Southampton but it's sourced from the wholesaler and it's locally sourced and they advertise it like that like at the moment they've got a problem with um Tesco's, I think, where they're saying um, Richmond Farm Beef, or, and they're making up names of mythical farms, you know, to say they're, to sell their produce. And there's no such farm that exists, it's just a, a fancy name they've thought up to help sell their products. You know, they, they, they pull all sorts of tricks. But I think the well, proof of the pudding is the fact we're still here after all this time and they're still busy. And are still enjoying it, you know. We don't want to expand anymore. We're quite happy with what we got, you know, little and good. 